Hi guys, I'm here with a video showing you how I made the horns for my Blood Moon Katarine cosplay. Blood Moon Katarina is from a video game called League of Legends, and the Warbla for this cosplay was actually sponsored by Cosplay Supplies slash Warbla NA. I will have a link to their sites as well as the Warbla down in the description box. They gave me a few sheets of Warbla to create all of the armor and prop pieces for this cosplay. So big thanks to them. Let's get on to the materials and tools you will need. You will need a one inch thick board of insulation foam. I just buy those small square cut that are sold at various home renovation stores. You will also need foam board glue and warbla. They supplied me with warbla black art for this build. Then you will need primer of your choice. I used wood glue. Paint primer of your choice. I used Rustolian standable and filler paint primer and Rustolian's white matte paint primer. You will honestly need an airbrush. You can use other paints if that's what you have to work with. But if you want to get really nice gradients like this, I do recommend an airbrush. It's really the only way that I at least know how to get such a nice gradient. You'll also need some kind of sealant. I use clear glossy spray paint. You also need tools like a heat gun, a Dremel, medium fine grit sandpaper, and various cutting tools like a box cutter and scissors. And I think that's everything. If I have forgotten anything, I will list everything that I used down in the description box. Down in the description box, you'll also be able to find a link to the templates that I made. I've made templates for the entire Blood Moon Katarina cosplay, so those will be down in the description box. And with that, let's get on to the crafting. The first step is to draw up your patterns. I sketch mine out onto a scrap piece of paper and use a reference photo as a guide. I basically just draw up what I see. I'm not really sure how else to explain this. I've been doing it for so long it just comes naturally at this point. However, if you do struggle with pattern making, I will have these templates up on my store Envy and Etsy. Both are linked down below. I will say that it does take a few tries to get it right. I measure out the size I want to the horns to be beforehand, so I have a general idea of that, but I'll still cut out my final template, hold it up to me, see how it looks, and make any adjustments or even redo it entirely before I'm finally happy with the product. Whenever I think I'm ready to cut it out, I'll always trace over what I've sketched up with a sharpie just so I have one nice final guideline to follow. Once my patterns are ready, I move on to the next step. I take the pattern I just made and trace it out onto my material. For these horns, I'm using one inch thick insulation foam board. However, I wanted the horns to be thicker than this, so I traced my patterns out four times instead of just two, creating two pieces for each horn. Once all the pieces were traced out, it was time to cut them out. I used a box cutter for this. You're going to want to make sure that you're using either a new blade or a blade that has been sharpened before cutting, like just previously sharpened. This will help make the process go so much smoother and easier. My blade was getting a little dull at this point, so you're going to see some spots where it didn't quite go as smoothly as I would have liked. Be sure to be careful while cutting as well, and try to always cut away from yourself. I say as there's a clip where I cut towards myself, um, do as I say, not as I do. After all four pieces were cut out, I needed to glue two and two together. There is insulation foam board glue available and that is what I usually use, however I found out that mine had dried up and it was way too hot to drive over to the next town to buy some more. So I decided to experiment instead. Since you can't use things like contact cement or hot glue because it will just eat through this kind of foam, I decided to try craft glue or Elmer's glue PV a glue? I don't actually know the other names for it, but I know it is Elmer's glue. It's the glue that you use when you're in like elementary school. And spoiler alert, it worked 
Great, I applied the glue between each layer, stuck the two pieces together, placed some heavy books on top to keep them pressed together, and set them aside to let them dry overnight. Once those were dry, it was time to move on to what is probably the most difficult or trickiest step, especially if you're not comfortable with carving. And that is that you are going to need to carve the horns into the shape they need to be. You're going to want to use a sharp box cutter or something similar to it to do this, by the way. And make sure it's sharp because it's going to be way harder if it's not. I first drew on the shape I wanted the base of the horns to be, and I drew that onto the base of the horns on the insulation foam. To get the shape, I just traced out the area where the horn or one horn will sit on my mask, but I did to both horns because I wanted them to be identical. The shape is basically a V shape. Then, little by little, I started to carve away at the horns. The goal is to curve all the edges, bring the tip to a point, and the base into that weird V-shape that fits into the mask slot for the horn. I'll have an entirely different video on the mask, by the way, but for now, the biggest advice I can give to help with this step is to go slow and take away a little at a time. Once it's cut off, you can't put it back, so be sure you're never taking off too much. It also doesn't need to be perfect by the end of this step. The next step will help smooth and shape it further. You'll also want to make the horns as identical as possible. This is never going to be perfect, so don't stress too much over it. As I got towards the end of the carving process, I'd hold the horns up to each other and check things like the thickness and length of each and make adjustments as needed. There were some areas that didn't end up even at all from how I had originally cut out the pieces. My not so super sharp blade ended up taking out a couple chunks along the edges. However, it was no biggie. I just used some EVA foam clay to fill in this area. You can also use things like scrap pieces of warbler later on or any other kind of filler material you prefer to work with. Once you've got the horns mostly shaped into the shape you need, it's time to start sanding. I used medium grit sandpaper for this step. I believe it was like 100 grit. Your goal with this step should be to sand out all the rough edges and any harsh angles that are still left. The horns should be smooth and curvy by the end. Now it was almost time to move on to the warbler, but first I needed to create a new pattern since these horns aren't the same 2D shape that the original template we drew up was. To do this, I wrapped the horns in plastic wrap, layered duct tape on to only one half of the horns because you're only going to need one half to create the pattern, and drew a line down the center top and bottom and then I cut it out following along those lines. Next, I took that pattern and traced it out onto a piece of warbler, leaving some room around the edges, basically the equivalent of seam allowance. I just flattened out the duct tape pattern and didn't bother to add any darts or anything like that because warbler is very flexible once heated and will stretch and shape to fit the curve of the horns without the need of darts, unlike fabric or foam. Next, I cut out the pieces that I just traced out and to do that, I used scissors. Any scissors should work. The scissors that I use are just spring-loaded kitchen shears. You should have four pieces of warbler cut out into a rough horn shape now. Two for each horn. Take two of these and heat them up using a heat gun until the warbler becomes soft and malleable. You're going to want to work quickly for this next step. Take the two warbler pieces and sandwich the insulation foam horns between the two layers by pressing the two halves of the warbler pieces together around the horn. You should have excess at the top and bottom of the horns for each half. Press that excess together and against the horn to close up those seams. Be sure to be using heat safe gloves for this part, otherwise you will burn yourself. The warbler gets very hot. <laughs> 
I say work quickly because you'll want to avoid heating the warbler when it's on the horns as much as possible. If you heat the warbler too much while it's on the horns, the heat will get through the warbler to the insulation foam and begin to melt it, causing dents in your horns. So do as much shaping as you can while the warbler is still hot from that first round of heating. However, inevitably, you will have to heat the warbler while it is on the horns, so my advice for that is to use quick motions and heat it just enough for the warbler to become flexible again. While the warbler is still warm, take a pair of scissors and cut off the excess warbler at the top, bottom, and base of the horns. You can do this while it's cool as well, I just found it much easier to cut the warbler when it was a little bit warm. Using the tip I just gave you, heat the warbler carefully along the seams and use your fingers to press and smooth that out, blending the seams together. If you happen to find a hole in your seam where the warbler was torn away when cutting like I did, just take a small piece of scrap warbler, heat it up, and then press it into the hole, blending it into the rest of the warbler with your finger. Now it's time to sand some more. I should note that I filled in some of the rough edges at the seams using cosplay clay just to avoid overheating the horns. Other filler materials will work too. To sand the horns, I used medium grit sandpaper. You want to keep sanding the horns until the warbler starts to feel as smooth as possible. It probably won't be perfect. In fact, it most definitely won't be perfect, but don't worry too much about it. The following steps will help make it even more smooth. There is some excess warbler still at the seams in the curves where my scissors couldn't quite get to. To smooth this down, I used my Dremel. I only really used my Dremel to sand up and down the top and bottom seams, not the whole thing, just because the Dremel, like it wears down the Dremel head quite a bit, if that makes sense, because you're basically sanding plastic and the Dremel heats it up and melts it a little bit, which is fine, it's not going to damage the horns or anything like that, but the Dremel bit gets worn through pretty quickly. So I only really used it for the seams and then I continued to hand sand a bit more. In the next step, I primed the horns with wood glue. I recommend anywhere between three to five layers. I did three layers of wood glue total and sanded in between each step and after the final step. This really helped to further smooth out the horns. In this clip, one horn is already attached to the mask. I just attached it by heating up the warbler on both the horn and mask and sticking it together. Warbler holds to itself really well. You don't need any glue. I'll be showing this better in the mask making video though. After the last layer of wood glue was dried and sanded, I took the horns outside and coated them in a sandable filler spray paint primer from Rust-Oleum. Once that was dried, I came back inside to sand. For this, I used a fine grit sandpaper that was 220 grit. I want to note that if there's any areas that need more filling than a paint primer can provide, I recommend filling it with Bondo's glazing and spot putty after the wood glue step is done, but before this step. Apply it in any gaps, let it dry, sand it down, and repeat until you're happy with how smooth the horns are. Then move on to this step. Do two layers of sandable spray paint primer, sanding after each, and then coat the horns with a white spray paint primer before moving on to painting. To paint the horns, I'm going to recommend an airbrush. It's really one of the only ways that I know of to get a smooth blended gradient. But if nothing else, I'm sure a mix of oil and acrylic paints should do the trick, and maybe even spray paints if you're really good at working with spray paints. To start off, I applied a light blue color just below the tip of the horns, leaving it white at the very tip and letting the color soften up as it gets closer to the white tip in order to blend it in. To figure out the color placement, I do suggest looking at a reference photo, by the way. After the layer of blue, I added a layer of purple underneath that and then a layer of pink underneath that. To get a nice gradient, I would slowly mix the colors as I went along. So I would add a bit of red to the light blue that I had already mixed to make it purple, and then I would add a bit more of both blue and red to darken up that purple and apply it a bit further down 
And then I would mix in a bit more red and apply that a bit further down until I got to the area where it was supposed to be pink. And with the pink, I kind of had to just remix the colors entirely to get a nice vibrant pink. But I think you get the idea. To blend in the pink, I would just lighten up on the trigger a little bit so that less paint came out as I got towards the purple area. Be sure to let the colors dry before moving on to the next. I did two layers of this gradient, working my way up the horn rather than down it for the second layer. Basically, you'll just want to go back and forth a bit, blending the colors until you're finally happy. I did the same thing just with a different color gradient for the horn attached to the mask. Once you are happy with the colors, seal it with a coat of clear glossy spray paint. And that's it. The horns are done. This is what they should look like. You should have two in two different gradient colorways. So obviously this horn is attached to the mask and I will be showing that all in a video featuring the building of the mask. But for now, this is what it looks like once it's attached to the mask and completed. As for this horn, Orba was a little bit too heavy for spirit gum to hold up. So in the end, I ended up just using a mix of contact cement and hot glue to glue it directly onto the wig. You could probably also also get away with using magnets. I'm sure if I added two magnets to this and then two magnets into the wig, it would hold up just fine. In retrospect, I probably should have glued it a teeny bit further down, but it's fine. It's fine. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video helpful and easy enough to follow along with. A big thanks again to Cosplay Supplies for giving me the warble I needed to create this cosplay. If you want to see photos of the completed cosplay, I will be posting those over on my Instagram and website. Both of those are linked down in the description box. Thanks so much for watching guys. Have a lovely day and bye.